Hello and welcome to a video all about how to calculate confidence intervals and what a confidence interval actually is. So quite often in maths we take a small sample um, and we work out the average um, and we work out the standard deviation from a small sample and then we assume that that sample is the same as the whole population. Now of course our sample isn't going to be exactly the same as the whole population. So when we're looking at normally distributed um, populations, um, what we can do is we can create a confidence interval. And what a confidence interval is tells us um, what two values do I is my mean going to be between to a certain amount of confidence. So for example, I've got my sample. And if I want a 90% confidence interval, okay, that means when I've worked out my two values, I'm 90% confident that the mean for all of the things that all of the whole population would be between those two values. So on my diagram, the normal distribution looks a little bit like this, the standard bell curve. And I'm saying that between these two values, I've got 90% of my data. So I'm 90% confident I'll be between them. Okay. That does mean, however, that this value here would be the 0.95, the 95% value, and 0.05 value, okay? So on my other one, on my 95% confidence interval, okay? So this time, I'm getting a little bit more stringent because now, instead of only being 90% confident between those two values, I now want to be 95% confident and between those two values so this might be something for that's a little bit more important than 90% so something a little bit more critical so this time I'm looking at 0 0.975 the reason I'm looking at those ones is because this bit up here would only be 5% because I'd have another 5% down the bottom and this bit up here would be 2.5% because I have the other 2.5% down there all right and similarly for a 99% confidence interval, okay, um, my bell curve, this time I'm going to get, I need to be 99% confident that I'm in between those two values. So my values are now quite a range away. And I'm looking at, that's only you know, half a percent now. That's half a percent. So I'm looking for the 0.0995 value when I use my tables. Now, the formula I'm going to use, okay, the formula I'm going to use is to find my actual values is going to be my mean, add or take away the Z value I'm going to calculate using the table, times my standard deviation, all divided by the square root of how many things are in my sample. Right, so that's the basic formula that we're going to use. Okay, so let's have a look at a question, an example question. And then there's four questions for you to have a go at. So here's our example question. Let me just zoom this out a little bit so you can actually see the whole question. So in a sample of 12 cars to get to 60 miles an hour, uh, here are the results in seconds. And we can see them there. So construct a 90% confidence interval, okay, of the time it takes to get to 60. So my first step is I need to work out my mean and my standard deviation. Now here they've given me a list and I've got a calculator a bit like this. So I advise you to learn how to use your calculator. So what we're going to do is we're going to put that data in here. So it's set up to in stats mode. It's always kind of that on most calculators. And then you're looking at the one variable. So I've only got one variable here. So one variable. And I'm just going to put these numbers in. So 12, and then I press equals after each number. Okay. So just putting these in, into my table, so it should have all of that information in. Okay, once I put the last one in, I then press AC. So it comes up like that. Now this is where it changes by calculator type. On some calculators, you press shift and five, and I'll have like a little stats written above the five on this one it doesn't it's got optm so i press optm and it comes up with another menu and for me i'm looking at the one variable calc other menus it will it will ask for something slightly different you can't do anything wrong here so if you click the wrong thing um just try again so i'm going to go for 
one variable calc, and as you can see, I get all the information. So my x bar is the mean, so my mean is 11.75, and my standard deviation is the sigma. See there, sigma x? Okay, so my sigma is 1.362. Three decimal places should be enough. Okay, I'm just going to put my calculator back into normal mode. So now, um, I'm going to use, I'm going to draw a diagram. I always draw a diagram because it means that you know, it just helps me picture what's going on. I want the 90% confidence interval. So I'm looking for the 0.95 value, because I've got 5% either end. So if I use my table here, 0.95, it tells me, is 1.6449. So that is a Z value of 1.6449. That's normally the first mark on this type of question. Okay? I then use my formula. So x equals my mean, 11.75, plus or minus 1.6449, times by 1.362, sigma, all divided by the square root of n. Now I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. It says in the question as well. All divided by the square root of 12. So I'm just going to put this into my calculator. 11.75, add, fraction, 1.6449 times 1.362 divided by the square root of 12. And that gives me 12.397. And if I go back now and change that add to a takeaway, delete that, change it to a takeaway, and that gives me 11.103. All right. I'm just going to round to one decimal place. So that means my confidence interval is 11.1 is less than or equal to my time, which is less than 12.4 seconds. So that's my confidence interval. I am 90% confident, 90% confident that my car should be able to get to 60 within 11.1 to 12.4 on average. Okay, and that's for all cars now. So a car manufacturer says they can get their car in an average of 10 seconds. Well, 10 seconds is below. So I would say 10 seconds is not in my interval, not in my confidence interval. So I would assume they are incorrect. That's because they're on this bend. There's only a 5% chance they're, they're on the lower end of this, which is really small in comparison to the 90% chance of being within there. So I would probably disregard them. Okay, so here's, here's your go. So have a look at the question, pause the video, and have a go, then we'll work through the solutions in a moment, okay? So pause the video. Okay, so let's go through it then. So first things we need to work out is our, me, our mean, sorry, mu, and sigma. They use different symbols for mean depending on the different parts of maths. I don't think it's necessarily that important. They're not going to mark you down for using the wrong symbol for mean. So mu is normally for when you're looking at normal distributions, um, x bar normally when you're looking at just standard statistics. Okay, so I'm going to put these numbers into my calculator. So again, I'm going to go into stats mode, one variable. 35, 45, 32, 30, 52, 30, 54, 37, 39, 43, 52, 37, 30, 21, 17, 18, 16, 15, 14. And then S, AC. And on mine it's option. Yours it might be shift 5. One variable calcs. So what we've got is the mean is 21.5. And my standard deviation is 12.1. Quite a large standard deviation there. Okay. So, we're then going to, for part A, we want a 95% confidence interval this time. So, that's 95% in here, which means only 2.5% up here. So, I'm looking for the 0.975 value. So, I find that on my, on my table, my Z table. 0 0.975, 1.96, okay, it's 0 0.96 to 0, 0, so from here, 
and then use my formula x equals the mean plus or minus um, z times standard deviation divided by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Square root of 18. Remember, it's the square root on the bottom there. So that gives me, if I look at my two values here, 21.5 add 1.96 times 12.4. Oh, let's change that again. 21.5 add fraction 1.96 times 12.1. Over the square root of 18. That's 27.1 is the upper end, and the lower end. I'm just going to go back and change that add to a take away, and that gives me 15.9. Okay, so um, test results put an R in there. Okay, so I I should be somewhere. I'm 95% confident. I'm going to be between 15.9 and 27.1 marks okay so a school says their average mark is 50 all right now that is well out of my um way out of my confidence interval so i would probably say there as that is way out of my confidence interval and um, that actually i would say no um this is outside of my confidence interval Okay, so I would reject. Okay. Right, next question. Have a go at the question. Pause the video, have a go, and then we'll go through the answers. Okay, so again, we start by working out mu and standard deviation. So the standard deviation, they give me a variance of four, and the standard deviation is the square root of variance. So this time my standard deviation is 2. My mean, well I've got 10 ambulance, 57 minutes. So I'm going to do 57 divided by 10, which is 5.7 minutes. All right. So then I'm going to draw my normal distribution curve. This time I want the 90% confidence interval. So that's 90%. So it looks like I'm looking for the 0.95 value. Again, because this end will only be 5%. 0.95 gives me 1.6449, so my z value is 1.6449. I put that into my formula, so x equals 5.7 plus or minus um, 1.6449 times by 2 divided by the square root of 10, because I've asked 10 ambulances here in my sample. So my x value is going to be between... Let's work this out. 5.7 add 1.6449 times 2 over the square root of 10. That'll be 6.7. And if I take it away, it'll be 4.7 if I round it. Okay? So that's my confidence. I'm 90% confident my response time will be between those two. So another ambulance provider says the average response time is 4 minutes. Right. So... Four minutes is outside my confidence interval. So I would reject. Okay? So I would probably say I reject it or I'd say this probably isn't right. Okay. Question three. Pause the video, have a go yourselves, and then we'll talk through it, okay? Okay, so this time, again, I need to find the mean first, but I'm going to do it in seconds because this is given in seconds. I know my standard deviation is 5. So in seconds, I've got 8 times 60 to turn the minutes in seconds, add the extra 12. 8 times 60, add 12, gives me 492. And, of course, I'm dividing it by the 14 chefs. So I divide that by 14, and that gives me the answer... 35.1 so my mean is 35.1 seconds so I then start I'm going to draw out my curve and I want the 99% confidence interval this time 
okay so 99% which means I've only got half a percent outside it 0.995 is what I'm looking for so the 0.995 figure 0.995 is 2.5758 that's Z value of 2.5758 okay so what we do then is we put it into our formula so x equals mean which is 35.1 plus or minus our 2.5758 times our standard deviation divided by the square root of the 14 shifts that we've asked okay which gives me our x value going between 35.1 add 2.5758 times 5 over square root 14 which gives you 38.5 and on the other side I'm going to change that add to a takeaway and that gives you 31.7 so that's the I'm 99% confident that my chefs would be between those two values so as I'm between those two values, part B, a chef says he can make it an omelet in 30 seconds. Do we believe him? Well, 30 seconds is outside my confidence interval. Um, so I would reject. Okay? Or I would question this. Because, of course, there's only half a percent that he's below that now, which is a bit ridiculous. That's really small.